YCS Niagara is done. We got a winner. Landon Oliver with Fire Kings, Snake Eye Azamina. Not very surprising. And I think two of the most expensive cards of Rage of the Abyss have proven their worth because Molchomi Fuaros and, of course, Dominus Impulse are huge in this metagame. We're going to break down everything that happened in the tournament. There's a lot of really cool stuff. New prizing. A lot of top decks that haven't been doing well in the previous format. And Rage of the Abyss is, again, wide open. Probably the big surprise of this event. Ryan Yu, Master Duel World Champion for 2024. Finished second place at Niagara with pure Sky Striker. We're going to see the list in a second. I got to say, the most... Basic ass photon hypernova list ever. No spice, no Molcharmies, no Azamina. This guy's cracked. He figured out the meta. He just outplayed everybody. And he has previously, I think, finished second with this deck in the NAWCQ, I believe. Link it below or comment below if I'm wrong. But this has been my surprise for the day. And I got to tell you, as a former Sky Striker player myself, I think I'm going back. First place in Swiss was my boy, Pac. I was like, what is he playing? Snake Eye, Azamina for sure. Ubel maybe. He just almost won a YCS and Sam won a YCS with Ubel. What is he playing? Tenpai? He played Centurion. We're going to see his list. He finished 10-0. I believe it was 10-0 in Swiss. First place in Swiss, out in top 16 of the tournament, but... Huge achievement. Again, one of the most consistent and successful players of our time. Pack is doing it once again. I think Sam didn't top this time, but alas, YCS champion. New YCS prizes, guys. This is kind of big, even though this is not a $10,000 suitcase of cash, right? But still, we still got prize cards. I believe now it is either Steam Decks or Nintendo Switches. Playmat. We got new YCS sleeves which is exclusive to ycs's which is really really cool it's not a wcq sleeve it's an actual ycs sleeve which hasn't been like that i think in the past or at least in the recent past in addition to that a set of four metal magnetic die in here and this cool frame i think i covered it on the channel previously or at least you saw it on twitter if you follow me there this frame has been sent out to ota stores with the Yu-Gi-Oh! logo, but now, I think top 32, or maybe top 16, got this frame to take home. You can frame cards in it, you can you have the YCS logo. You know, it's not like the most incredible, like it's not a Mercedes, right? But this is cool. Like, you get out of the YCS, you get your play mat, you get your prize cards, and of course you get your sleeves, exclusive die, and a frame. Starting, this is starting to feel good. Kudos Konami, listening and hearing. Time for some decks, and especially breakdowns of the room. Kind of a mixed bag, to be honest. If you look at the halfway point, at the 50%, 50 it becomes like really split, right? Let's see the whole thing. Eight unknowns still. Uh, you can guess probably what they are. Snake Eyes are the most represented in top 32, Right? Which makes sense. As Amina, extremely powerful. I just played it in the sneak peek. It was, it's a really good deck, right? Fire King are relying on the same engine, same Snake Eye engine, the Azamina stuff that get you to OG, but now have Cordier, Olkanix, very solid apparently, and won the event as well. Now, we got three U Bell. I believe Tenpai should be here. I think it says two here. I think there were five, probably. There were a little bit more. Two is not enough. And of course, second place, Sky Striker. We do see a few decks that we haven't seen in a while, like Labyrinth has been out of the format for a little bit, Centurion, and Rescue Ace, right? We got, of course, Julius from Europe and one Exodia, even. So you can see here, we are back to $1,300 decks. Yeah. If you play Dominus Impulse, and Fallus and Perulia, your deck is already at a thousand. This is the winner, Landon Oliver. Pretty standard Fire King list, maining Fallus, which makes a lot of sense. 
and this i believe is the card that is going to define the next format if your deck can play this card it is going to be above the rest you bell cannot play this card obviously because a fiendsmith card it locks you out of light earth and wind effects for the rest of the duel but this card is insane you can activate it from your hand on your opponent's turn or on your turn if you control cards your field doesn't have to be empty like imperm and it negates a special summon effect and if you have a trap it pops it so the unchained trap gets immediately checked the ubel stuff gets checked princess in the graveyard gets checked field spell to summon the ip from the back row gets checked like this checks so many cards he has amina stuff this card is crazy solemn warning hand trap for free and if your deck can run it once again 10 pi fire kings that don't run any light monsters it's going to excel because this card is great the side here is kind of wild to be honest skill drain is cool civil spoils of betrayal i guess you get an additional basically omni negate for like a board breaker skyburn dramatic chase there is a solid combo where you can end up with the bell starting the spell and trap zone and then betrayal becomes live retaliating c basically shifter without running shifter and prulia on the side fucho for 10 pies this is probably the most incredible sensation of this event ryan used second place with strikers and as you can see really like you do see some impulse in the side of course this card is really good very like anti tenpai side deck to be honest like three ash three barrier three roar he's like i'm not losing to tenpai even though the matchup should be good here right but such a standard list even the extra deck is not spicy like there's no azamina cards no more charmies no he just proved every everybody that you you don't have to play these cards which is crazy right two talents three thrust three engages at three absolutely amazing goblin this is sick like you have three goblin three engage three desires three thrust crazy achievement 10 pi continuing to be a menace on the format with nutbuster dragon here and quacky mirror dragon that solos you bell but doesn't really do anything that good against the other ones um one perulia two flawless you'd probably play three of each but who knows like budgetary reasons and shifter and impulse this deck <laughs> this deck sucks carries people but it is what it is like you have to have the anti meta but this time they went a little bit too far hopefully in the next balance we don't have to deal with this deck anymore otherwise i'm not gonna play Yu-Gi-Oh anymore and this deck is back once again why is this back this deck can run dominus impulse it is exclusively dark monsters Chaos Angel is a dark. All the fiends are darks. All the labyrinth cards are dark. You just make sure you activate the Fualas before you activate this, and then you're not locked out of wins. 43 cards, trap tricks, Darumas, rollbacks. We're just leaning on the rollbacks and the Darumas because they're so strong against the Link decks. Fire King, Snake Eye, Yubel. And DDGs, D Barriers. Funny, if they if they played Virus, they could have taken out Ryan Yu. The Bestial Centurion deck from Pac. I don't know. I, I guess he was looking for a deck that doesn't lose to Flawless, and this deck does it. You special summon from the extra deck once. You set up for an Omni Negate. You play a ton of hand traps. You can see he even went as far as playing Mourners. So three Imperms, two Nib, two Mourner, two Ogre, three Veiler, three Ash, and three more Bestials, which is synergetic to the engine. And then all the more charmies in the side with deck lockdown such a strong cards and prosperity in the side this guy's crazy undefeated in swiss that's crazy and then the most expensive deck in the room right now once again a deck that can run dominus impulse and this is how the meta is going to look like if your deck can run impulse you will do good the more charmies aren't as important as the dominus impulse this is my conclusion from this deck and this deck still has its you know airlifter is still at one but this deck is so consistent with three emergency and impulse and bell star and the one he's not even playing like you know the 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 deception engine is full combo here because you get to hydrant with og kind of sick this has been the event i think that i'm 
on one hand, happy to see some more decks making it to the top and much, much less Fiendsmith presence. We haven't, fiend, we haven't seen one Fiendsmith card here. Not to say that there weren't any, but not in this video at least. More prizes for winners and top cut players. Good. A little bit more diversity, a little bit more like retro decks coming back, but I think it is all symptom of the fact that Dominus Impulse is such a incredibly powerful, absurd card that if your deck runs it, it just floats all the way to the top. Let me know what you guys think about Impulse and the format. Thank you so much for watching this far. Leave your comments below on what should I play for regionals? I honestly don't know. My take up striker. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.